The Keystone wallet is climbing up my ranks of one of the best Bitcoin wallets, both for its design and features. My name is Darren, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through a complete tutorial review of the Keystone 3 Pro. We're going to cover what is the Keystone 3 Pro, the unboxing, setup of the Keystone 3 Pro, connecting it to a wallet, sending and receiving from that wallet, cover the benefits, features that make it unique along the way, and at the end, if it's really a Bitcoin wallet, you should consider to store your wealth. Keystone is on their third iteration of their wallet. This is the Keystone Pro. I've reviewed the Keystone on my channel previously. They used to be a company called the Kobo. And I detailed the whole story of how they switched in that video. The Keystone 3 Pro improves upon this as there is a Bitcoin only firmware you can install, three secure elements, 100% offline option. The Bitcoin only feature allows integration into Bitcoin wallets, multi-sig features, and adding passphrases. I would compare the features of the Keystone 3 Pro to something like the Cold Card MK4. They're similar in price, where at Keystone you can get it for 149 US dollars, and Cold Card is current, the Cold Card MK4 is currently on for 159 US dollars. Now you're gonna get a bit better of a deal on the Keystone 3 Pro as it has a camera, fingerprint sensor, and a touch screen. When you unbox the Keystone 3, we want to ensure it's not tampered with in any way. I'm actually presently surprised with the unboxing the Keystone. It comes in a quality box. It The box describes exactly what's, what's in the Keystone 3 Pro package. Unboxing the Keystone 3, little, it's a little bit smaller than the, a cell phone. It has an SD card slot, camera, fingerprint sensor. It comes with a USB-C uh, cord, but it does, again, you can keep this air-gapped. This actually box it comes in is acts as a drawer that you can attach under your desk. It's a pretty unique dual use case for a box that it's shipped in. It comes with seed phrase cards in multiple different languages, a coupon to use for future purchases, UniPass, not really sure what this is, and a full getting started guide in multiple languages. Now it's gonna come charged, but I would recommend fully charging it we're not gonna plug this directly into the computer to charge because the reason you bought this was probably to have its air gapped features. Turning it on, you're gonna go through the agreement to set it up. Um, this next step is to complete the firmware update. And this is where I would recommend using it as a Bitcoin only device. You're going to get rid of a lot of those other features like connecting it to MetaMask, um, other cryptocurrency coins that historically aren't the most secure. I'm gonna set up the wallet first and then show you at a later date how to set up the Bitcoin only firmware. Next step, it will bring you to setting up your pin code. This is how you get into the device and it will provide you six digits to put in. Looks like that is the minimum. And once you've done that, you're gonna choose uh, the wallet name. And what would I recommend is choosing standard backup instead of Shamir backup. This is the backup seed phrase to your wallet. Ensure no one ever sees this. Ensure you're never putting this online, taking a photo, making a video of it, just like me. That's a sure way for your Bitcoin to be lost. This is the way you would recover your Bitcoin if your device was ever smashed, malfunctioned, dropped, cracked. The seed phrase here is one of the most important things to your Bitcoin or and using it in the future. So we're gonna press generate wallet and it's going to take you to your seed phrase and display those 24 words. I would take the seed phrase card that it came with in the box and slowly write these words down. We're going to take our time and write them as best we can without any spelling mistakes, as clear as we can. You can do it in uppercase or lowercase. Once you're done, it will bring you to a test to ensure you've wrote down those seed words properly. You're gonna correlate the letters to the number in which it was ordered. Once you've passed that, you're going to generate your new wallet. The next step once our wallet is generated is we're gonna update the firmware to Bitcoin only firmware. So go to the Keystone website and we are going to go to resources, firmware, and Bitcoin Bitcoin only firmware. We are going to change it from multi coin to Bitcoin only because it comes default as multi coin. Once you do this, you cannot revert back to multi coin, and that's just how I like it. So we're going to click on this, I understand, and download this firmware. We're going to save it to an SD card on our computer. There are the instructions on their website if you want to dive in. We are then going to plug that SD card into our Keystone with the file that was downloaded from the Keystone website 
and it will start the update for us. It'll prepare your wallet once that update is installed and you will get a screen where it says receive and scan. So let's head to the device settings now. You can enable the USB to use it connected to your computer. In the system settings, you can change the vibration, verify your device, wipe your device. And then wallet settings, we have, uh, you can set the fingerprint instead of the passcode or change your pass passcode. The passphrase, you can add a passphrase. This would be the 25th or 13th word. Don't recommend that right now. And then seed phrase check, you can check your 12 words. We're always gonna be typing this into uh, the device, never when it's plugged in or on a computer. So we're gonna connect the Keystone to a software wallet now. So we're gonna compress connect to software wallet. I'm gonna be using Sparrow. Within Sparrow, you want to go to file, new wallet. We're gonna name our wallet. We're gonna create this wallet um, and we are going to connect hardware wallet. So we're gonna click on this. We're gonna choose air gapped wallet and search for the keystone. And we're gonna scan this QR code that we see here. It will load our wallet up. We're gonna press apply. I'm not gonna put a password on this. This would be a password on your Sparrow if you wanted to. And it's gonna load our wallet. So giving you a tour of the Sparrow wallet, um, here is the homepage we're gonna live. This is gonna be your balance. Obviously, you're probably not likely to have a balance if you first opened this wallet. This is where you're going to be receiving Bitcoin. Here is your receiving address. A list of all of your addresses are posted here on the Sparrow wallet. Your UTXO, so UTXOs again are deposits, so we can look at our deposits and see those. And the settings is where you would change the type of address. Uh, your derivation path, fingerprints here. I wouldn't be adjusting these. So we can head back to our receive and receive our first deposit on our device. So it will generate an address for you. See this derivation path, this is the sixth address of this address type within this wallet. Anytime you're gonna be sending Bitcoin to a wallet, I would definitely recommend you verify the address first. So in order to do that, we're gonna head back to our keystone and we are going to press receive. Um, you can see this is the derivation path of five. On Sparrow, it's a derivation path of six, and you can see they don't match, as this one starts ends with VR4, where key Sparrow wallet ends with VHY. This is the same wallet, they're just connected, so we are going to change the address to address six. And we can confirm that it matches the one we are seeing in Sparrow. You always want to confirm it matches on your device, because there could be a man in the middle attack. This could be a fake Sparrow wallet. This could be someone uh, spoofing their address. So we always wanna ensure that it is on our device before sending Bitcoin. You can either receive via QR code here, or you can do all of it back on the computer, and that's where I'm going to go to. We're gonna copy and paste this wallet into our exchange, our other wallet where we're sending from. I'm not gonna show you where to, how to send Bitcoin in there because there's so many different wallets and where you're sending it from. But once the Bitcoin is sent there, you will receive a notification on Sparrow and it will pop up as an unconfirmed transaction here. You can see I received a thousand sats with my total balance. Now, once this is confirmed, we can send the funds from our Keystone wallet. On your Keystone your device, you're not gonna see any balance. Again, you can kind of think it of the Keystone as really just a key to send on your addresses. We are going to copy um, a receive address to where we want that Bitcoin to go. And we are going to head to send and we're going to always paste in this address. Um, we are going to label it as 10. We are gonna put in the amount of sats that we want to send and it automatically calculates the current fees for us here or we could change our fees that we want. Um, you can see how the transaction's made, so it's all coming from this address. Some of it's going here, some of it's going back to our change address, which is our address we have, and then the fee we're paying to the network. They're extremely high fees right now at 44 sats per V-byte. So we're going to create this transaction, and we are going to finalize for signing once we are ready. And what's next on the keystone is we're going to sign a transaction via the QR code. So we're going to keep this 100% air gapped and use the camera on both our computer and the keystone to sign this transaction. 
So first off, we are going to press uh, show QR on Sparrow and we're gonna press scan. And we're gonna scan this with our Sparrow wallet. It will give us the transaction, um, where it's coming from, where it's going to, and our change address going back to us. So we're gonna slide to confirm. We're gonna enter our passcode and then we're gonna confirm the transaction on Sparrow. So we're gonna press scan QR code and it will bring up our webcam and we signed the QR code. Next step is we could view the final transaction or press broadcast. We are gonna press broadcast transaction. So you can see 10,000 sats are moving to a new address and sending and receiving. So it's just as easy as that. You can think of the Keystone as a key to send and receive. All in all, the Keystone Pro 3 is a great wallet. It has tons of features for the pro Bitcoin user, for the average Bitcoin user. You can think of it as an easy to use cold card interface with a touch screen. I would recommend it for the user who is looking to upgrade to the first air gapped wallet and see if it's right for them. Now do your own research. I definitely recommend reading about them, where it's coming from. Full disclosure, they did send me the Keystone 3 Pro. Did not promise a review, but I wanted to share my experience with it. If you like this video, I have lots of other videos on my channel comparing other wallets like the Cold Card, Trezors, Ledgers. If you have any more questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to help anytime. And uh, thanks for watching.